Hello fellow sewing enthusiasts, I'm Sarah Gunn, an author and creator of the fashion sewing blog, Goodbye Valentino. When I'm ready to sew a new garment, I often turn to classic silhouettes. And today I will be embellishing a simple skirt pattern with scalloped borders and tiered scallops. Let's take a look at this pink and white seersucker skirt. I've added a scalloped hem to, uh, to the skirt and I did this by creating a facing. Facings are easy to make. All you need are some elementary math skills and a few tools that you will have at home. You'll notice this skirt has five scallops on the front and five scallops on the back. To make your scallop, the first thing you do is decide, one, how many scallops you'd like. I chose an odd number for this skirt because it brings a focal point. The odd number brings a focal point to the hem. But you can choose any number that you desire. After you decide how many scallops you want, the next thing you'll do is you will measure the width of your skirt. My skirt is 35 inches wide. Divide the number of scallops into the width of the skirt. So 10 scallops into 35 inches would be a, or, yeah, t would be a three and a half inch scallop. With that number, I then cut a piece of interfacing. Um, I cut it a little bit longer than the width of the skirt. I measure, um, well, I cut it a little bit longer than the width of the front, one of the pieces of the skirt. Um, I measure that width, so that would be 17 and a half inches in the front. I add the seam allowance, and then between the seam allowances, I mark three and a half intervals across the interfacing. I then mark the midpoint of my scallop, and with a round object, I fill in the scallop. You can use a cup, a compass, a plate, or um, the lid of a, of a jar, uh, anything that works. And that's all there is to making your scallop. Now, um, this is my template. Now, to make my facing, I will place my template on the fold of the fabric. Uh, because this is going on the fold, I will eliminate one of the seam allowances. I'll just place it right off of the fold, and I'll cut. Next, I will mark uh, the scallops onto the fabric. I generally use a permanent marker because there's a lot of pressing and I don't want anything temporary that's gonna come off with heat or water. So here is the interfaced um, facing. I'll stitch the ends together, I'll finish the top edge, and then I'll just sew it to the bottom of the skirt. Um, you can see here that I've marked in red and I've stitched. But I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to reinforce this stitching because we're going to be doing a lot of clipping. Okay. So I'm going to stitch right on top of this red stitching, and I'm doing this in a green thread for contrast, just so you can see exactly what, how this works. I'm using a 100% polyester thread, nice and strong, that will give these scallops longevity. So when I get to the top of each scallop, I'm going to pivot. And I always slow down just as I reach that pivot point. And again, I'm just stitching right on top of the scallop. So it's important to do this twice, to stitch over these scallops twice. I use a smaller stitch. I think this is about a two, uh, two centimeter stitch length, and you need that for all of the curves and turning and pivots that you'll be doing. Okay. Afterwards, all you do is clip. And right along the base, 
and after you have trimmed your entire facing, you'll turn the scallop. Now, it's very important to clip to the very tip, a very point, so that your facing will lie nice and flat. And as you can tell, that produces the scallop. Of course, you'll press, and that's all there is to making the scallop facing. These are two skirts. Um, this is a, that are uh, embellished with scalloped tiers. I'm using the very same pattern, and it's easy to create these tiers. You have to do a little bit, of, you have to make a few decisions, but um, I start with the skirt base, and I decide where I want these tiers to fall. After I mark my pattern, I cut out separate layers. And starting with the bottom, you can kind of see how this principle works. I just go ahead and place them. On top, here is my back, and here is the front. So after, you've, um, after you have altered your pattern, or it's time to cut. It's time to cut your tiers. I use line tiers. You could use a facing, but I like using the line tiers. And the reason I like to do that is because there are no visible stitching marks on the scallops, and this lining helps them just lie nice and flat against the skirt. Now, I cut these um, tiers. I cut them on the fold, and then I stitch the front and back together. It is a very long piece of fabric, but it's going to wrap right around the skirt. Using uh, the lining, I place the lining um, on top. Now, I bring my template, and you can see how perfectly this fits. And I trace the scallops on the lining, stitch the lining together, and follow the same uh, steps that I did for the facing. When you um, stitch the uh, lining together, the seam is going to catch right in that pivot point, so it will not disturb your scallops at all. Here is a finished tier. You can see how nice and flat this is. Um, you don't have the multiple layers that you have with the facing and the hem. And so after I turn it and press it, I match the notches that I created on my skirt and simply stitch it right on top of the skirt. And this one will be stitched right on top. Now, Ordinarily, I would use um, a white thread, but this green thread is going to just show you where the stitching line, how, show you the principle and how this stitching line works. Because they're layered, you will not see the stitching line. After I've sewn my layers on, I'm going to stitch down the side um, of each side of the skirt, and that's going to enable you to treat these, um, these layers and the front and back pieces as a single piece of fabric. From that point, you will just finish the skirt following the uh, pattern manufacturer's instructions. Um, I do recommend using an invisible zipper, and I'm going to show you the blue skirt. I've put an invisible zipper in this blue skirt, and I want to do that because I don't want top stitching. Um, I don't want top stitching to interfere with these lovely petals. When we zip it, the petals will go right into place. They'll meet right there at the pivot points. Add a lining, and your petal skirt is complete. So it's a nice feminine detail to a classic pattern, the petal skirt.